it's that time of the week again, and it's time for Wirecast Live. And today we have a great show for you in store. We're going to be talking about how to do awesome live demos with one of the masters of live software demos, Terry White from Adobe. Plus, just for you guys, we have a special offer here on the show, so you're going to want to stay tuned. This should be a fun show. Welcome to Wirecast Live. I'll see you right after the opening credits. Welcome back to Wirecast Live, and I'm so glad you're joining us. Today it is Thursday, and it is 2.30 p.m. That is the time that we go live every week on our Facebook, YouTube, and Periscope pages. So you're in the right place. This is where we talk about all things related to live video and live streaming. We bring on experts in their fields to teach us some things we may not know, either about the marketing or the business side or the teaching side or how to present yourself on camera or all the things that may be related to live video or live video production and broadcasting. So it tends to be an interesting show. We try to pack it with all kinds of cool tips and great experts that uh, can come on and teach us things that we don't know how to do ourselves. And we have one of the best in the business joining us later today. And I will bring him on in just a moment. But for those of you who want or just can't get enough of your live broadcasting fix from all the other sources you get it from, you should mark your calendars or go to our email subscription list, which is at telestream.net slash Wirecast Live. We will just send you an inbox with up, uh, send you an email to your inbox with upcoming live guests, live topics, and we won't spam you, I promise. That's a great way to get notified when we're live. Another way to find us is following us on our social channels. Uh, so that's a great place to just subscribe or get notified. YouTube, Facebook, and Periscope will all notify you the minute we go live on those platforms. So that's another great place to find us. Now, for those of you that need a little more assistance or just want to be joined, join part of a community, maybe join the dialogue, our Wirecast users group is a fantastic way to get started with that. You can join the community. We have a growing group of Wirecast users. You can ask questions. You can share your posts or your live streams, your successes, your failures, your in-betweens. All of that stuff is can be found at the Wirecast users group on Facebook. So I encourage you to join that if you're looking for a place to join the community of other live streamers and live producers of video. Okay, um, with that aside, we have a few announcements and news uh, just to cover, and then we'll dive into our topic for today. So, as I mentioned, we do have a special offer just for you guys to say thank you. So, Terry and I will be talking about that in a little bit about that offer and where you can go to get that. But uh, we thought, as a way of saying thank you to our live guests and our live viewers, we are offering occasionally live deals on Wirecast. So, Stick around. We'll be talking a little bit more about where to get your live deal on Wirecast if um, that's something you are wanting to do. So we'll cover that in just a moment, but that is our first announcement. The second announcement you'll want to know about is Wirecast 9.0.1 was just updated and just released just a few days ago. It's just a small fix to Wirecast 9.0 that allows you to bring in uh, the uh, older documents. There was a couple issues with some 8.3 documents not properly loading. So this little update is a great one if you've got some old documents you're trying to make sure will work. So check that one out um, and go get it. That's what that update patch or fix was for. All right, finally, Facebook was in the news again. They seem to be in the news all the time, but this time it's actually really positive. Their product manager uh, spoke at Streaming Media East and talked about Facebook, a few Facebook features you can take advantage of now. So some of them that are there at the moment are things like live cross-posting, which is a way to increase your audience by actually simultaneously posting your live streams, not just as a share, but actually as a actual video feed to other pages at the same time. So the way you do that, and we'll actually maybe do some tutorials or some demos on how to do that later in some upcoming shows or in some special one-off streams. But live cross-posting, they also talked about um, 
some of the other features that you can take advantage of on the Facebook platform. But the one I'm really interested in is Facebook Rewind, Live Rewind. This basically is for those of you who are joining a live show like this one a little late and want to catch up on what you missed. Well, they will be rolling this feature out soon, which will allow you guys to come in a little bit later <laughs> and still catch what you missed. So check that out. We'll definitely announce that as soon as that's live. And of course, as always, there's a lot going on with Facebook and the API these days. So you'll want to check in here. We will be giving you the latest news. For example, they are going to not allow you to stream to groups soon and uh, personal profiles. A lot of that stuff is changing and is going to have to get rebuilt from the ground up. So if you haven't upgraded or updated to the latest version of Wirecast, that's really your safest bet when it comes to being able to use all those little API tweaks, knobs, and levers in Wirecast that you're used to. Older versions of Wirecast are going to start stop working after uh, not too much more time because Facebook is changing the way they share information uh, through their live APIs. So I'll keep you posted and again we'll maybe do some special one-off learning sessions or seminars on the Facebook uh, platform and how it's changing and what's new. So stay tuned for all that. All right, and last but not least, um, you will definitely want to come and check out any upcoming live shows. We'll be talking about webinars and live shows which are going to be coming. We have a webinar next week. I'll cover this more at the end of the show. So uh, without further ado, I do want to jump in, and Deborah Lee, you did a nice job of putting on the live events uh, QR code. So you can actually, can actually just hold up your phone, and that'll take you to the live Telstream events page, which will tell you about any upcoming webinars, learning sessions and things like that if you want to book a spot for those. Okay, we will come back and cover all that, but for now, I think it's time to jump into the main event, how to do amazing live demos. Uh, and joining me now, I have Mr. Terry White, who is an incredible evangelist and live software demo. He's done, been in the business and been working with Adobe for over 20 years. He's an expert in a lot of the creative cloud software uh, and is teaching weekly on his live channels on Facebook on YouTube and many more and he's traveling around the world teaching how to use the Adobe software suite and he uses Wirecast when he's not in person on stage doing it so I'd like to bring him on I wanted to bring him on to talk a little bit more about how to make amazing software demos a lot of people ask us about that and how they can do better ones so I figured who better to ask than Mr. Terry White Terry are you there I'm here. Hey, Andrew. Hey, How Terry. are you? Good. Thanks for joining Good us. Good to be here. Thanks yeah. for having me. So uh, you are currently joining us live on our Skype TX machine, but you're not actually at home right now. You are in no, the I'm Bay not. Area. I'm actually on the road. I'm, I'm not that far from you. Aha. Uh -huh. A few so, hours away. <laughs> that's true. So not too far from us here in uh, up by the Sacramento area in California. So I feel like you're just right around the corner for us. But... <laughs> Um, and if for some reason, I, Apple's voice recognition software still thinks Terry is the same as Siri. So Siri, when I yeah. say, hey, Terry, <laughs> Apple has a ways to go. They still haven't figured that one yeah. out yet. Maybe it's my pronunciation. So, uh, Terry, tell us a little bit more about, for those of you, uh, our audience who may not be familiar with your work, how did you get into becoming an Adobe Worldwide Evangelist? That sounds like oh, a pretty important goes. job. That goes way back. Um, actually, I started with Adobe in 1996 as a market specialist. So that was a uh, technical sales position. I would go into accounts and show them the software that the sales rep was trying to sell them at the time. And then uh, my career progressed in, on a technical side in sales to management director. And then um, I wanted to get back in front of the customers. So um, I took advantage of a reorg and became a worldwide evangelist and started doing world tours, getting back in front of the customer directly and showing the software. And, uh, it was, it was, um, day two Periscope that I was actually in the Netherlands at a, at a conference and Periscope had just come out the day before, uh, or time zones the same day. I don't remember. And I said, you know what? I'm going to walk the show floor with this new app called Periscope. So that's how my live streaming began. Ah, uh, that's and then it just took off from there. Yeah. So I, you've been working at Adobe for about as long as Telestream has been in existence. So yeah, it's that's definitely cool. that's pretty. And actually, go ahead. Actually, my first experience with Telestream is uh, ScreenFlow. Yeah. Used, you know, ScreenFlow for 
years of tutorials. So most of the stuff that's not li or not a recording of a live stream is actually um, tutorials I recorded in ScreenFlow. Got it, got it. So um, ScreenFlow is actually an onboarding tool that a lot of people are familiar with, particularly if you're a Mac user. It's one of our most popular uh, apps for Mac, and it has such a crazy, rabid fan base, and particularly in education and doing live uh, software demos and things like that. I really don't think there's a better tool to do that on the Mac. It's a fantastic editor and screen capture yeah, tool. It is. Are you still using it today? Yes. I am. Oh yeah, to this day, when I when I'm not doing a live stream and I, I need to record something, it's it's ScreenFlow. That's awesome. Yeah, ScreenFlow uh, is uh, you know I like to say it's like a better version of iMovie. It's like if it if iMovie did everything you wanted it to do, then ScreenFlow was kind of like that tool. Um, but yeah. it's it's kind of more. So um, so Terry, I I I definitely see the progression there. So you had to not only teach you know, Adobe software to your customers and clients and key accounts, but then kind of progressed into now being more of a general purpose teacher. What, uh, when do you feel like that really, um, what's the state of that right now? I mean, as far as doing live demos, what do you see your main role is? Are you trying to really just bring people in for the first time to get comfortable with it? Or are you trying um, to I'll actually be more of an advanced teacher in addition to being a beginner's sort of onboarder? It's definitely more beginner than it is advanced. So um, we have, you know, because uh, there are way more people that want to know how to get started than there are that say, hey, I've been doing this for 10 years. Show me something new. <laughs> so uh, it's just my just because of the sheer volume of people that come into Creative Cloud or are new to our products. I spend the majority of my teaching and, and streaming and evangelizing uh, for onboarding people that are new. Wow, yeah, I think as a software demo and teacher myself, I know it's really hard to straddle both, right? To be both an expert and advanced teacher uh, for also somebody who's just helping the beginners just get their feet under them. Uh, do you try to segment your content into um, different, you know, so it's really clear up front, or do you always try to throw a little bit of everything into all your presentations? Like a new version introduction, it's usually um, very segmented into, hey, we're going to learn how to do this specific thing in this in this live stream or this tutorial. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, so, what specifically now? Uh, what products are you most responsible for teaching? I am most responsible for on the photography side, Lightroom and Photoshop. On the graphic design side, Photoshop, Illustrator, InDesign, uh, Adobe XD, Adobe Dimension, and I think that's it. <laughs> Not quite sure. <laughs> of course, There's so yeah, many yeah, these days. So many, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. I think those, oh, here, let me look at my doc. <laughs> yeah, I think I got them all. <laughs> so every time they add a new app, are you of all three evangelists right. kind of going, you take this one, you take that one, now you take that one? Well, no, we all have our <laughs> disciplines. So I yeah. do photography and design. Jason does uh, video and audio. And Paul does usually design and web. I got it. So uh, let's talk a little bit about that and how you kind of you know set up because I think people really want to know maybe we can cover the technical side and then come back a little bit and talk about tips for preparation or teaching curriculum um, and some things you've learned along the way. So starting with just the tech side of things, how do you do live demos using Wirecast and on your you know machines? Well, and it's one of those things, just like photography, you're always honing the setup or the environment or the camera or the gear or the whatever to make it that much better the next time. So it started off with uh, me just doing um, the demo from like my MacBook Pro into, you know, and streaming into another computer. Uh, I think it was like an HP laptop at first. And uh, then I wanted to keep, you know, making it better, making it faster so I'm adding more displays I uh, you know for, so that way I can have a separate chat monitor that's right next to my webcam so I can see the chat and and make eye contact when I'm answering the questions um, and of course the desktop sharing component is what's what made me um, you know a, a proponent of Wirecast right off the bat because uh, if you go back to before like Facebook was allowing you to stream with third-party encoders or any of the other ones were doing it. You know, it's literally like like in Periscope's days and Facebook's early days. If I wanted to stream something I was doing from my desktop, I would literally have to point my phone at the computer, which mm -hmm. wasn't the best, um, you know, best viewing experience. 
Uh, but now that we can demo directly, uh, it makes it so much easier. So I have you know multiple scenes and shots set up, of course, so that I can switch from either a full view like we're seeing now of a headshot um, to where I'm just a little um, talking head in the corner and showing, of course, uh, giving the majority of the screen real estate to whatever it is I'm doing on the computer. Yeah, so um, let's talk a little bit about that. So you um, started with, you know, pointing your phone at the screen. I've seen other people do that. They'll point a camera at the screen, they'll point, and pretty soon you yeah. realize that, oh, if I can just natively capture the screen, that's uh, going to oh, be the best oh, yeah, quality, yeah. especially with small widgets or tools you need to grab right. that you want to show people. Um, that's one thing that I think I've noticed. And then uh, the other thing is still keeping yourself in the frame and throwing yourself in the lower corner. Uh, when did you start doing that, making sure you were present with, with the desktop or the user interface behind you? And then when did you start chroma keying out yourself so you were pretty even less distracting? Since, yeah, pretty much since day one. Um, I remember when I, in my early days, of actually was streaming before Photoshop and I'm sorry, before uh, Facebook and YouTube, it was actually on Twitch. And I remember seeing a guy on Twitch doing a demo and he was he was keyed out. And I was like, how do you do that? Mm -hmm. And back then I was using uh, starting with OBS and he you know showed me where it was in the menu or said where or someone said where it was in the menu. I found it, said, oh, this is definitely the way to go. Because then, like you said, you can be down in the corner still making contact, still you know talking to people without being a distraction because you're – like a square or a rectangle covering part of the interface. Yeah, and with uh, all you your background sometimes, behind you too. Right. You can still sometimes get in the way. So what I've done to as a tip is if I'm like, let's say I'm usually on the lower left corner, but if there's something going on uh, like in the interface in that corner, I have a shot that quickly just switches me over to the right side. So that way I can alter, you know, with a keystroke, I can alternate where I'm on the left or the right. That way, I'm not always in front of something that's important. That's a great tip. Uh, don't, don't just lock yourself to one side of the screen. Move yourself where you need to be relative to what yeah. you're teaching. Now, um, another tip that I kind of did, especially for Mac users, and I haven't figured out a good solution for this on Windows, which maybe you can shed some light on, or maybe some of our users, if you have a suggestion, please type it in on the Facebook chat or on the U YouTube channel. So... Um, but one of the things that you can do is, uh, in addition to being able to, you know, key yourself out and move yourself from side to side and shrink yourself so you're not a distraction but you're still connecting, uh, was is I actually actually do a, a live zoom on the screen. So you know how in the hmm. Apple accessibility. Um, yeah, yeah. I can actually manually zoom in um, rather than having to do that in Wirecast artificially. I can actually have the OS zoom level. So I'll just go into Oh, yeah. The, that, it's that so helpful. That definitely is helpful and fast. Oh, and one of the things I've seen one of my colleagues do is he doesn't chroma key himself out, but what he'll do is simply become part of the interface. So, you know, in most of Adobe apps, we have the panels on one side or the other. Mm -hmm. So he'll just take up a, a area of the panels that isn't that he's not going to use or isn't being used. Got it. So, you know, he, he just basically becomes along the side with all the rest of the panels. He's modularized himself. Right. Yeah. <laughs> he could change yeah. himself. That's a great way to do it. And that's the cool thing it. is that uh, Wirecast lets you crop your um, your camera to a, like a square or mm -hmm. something that fits perfectly in a certain spot. Yeah, kind of like we're doing right now. We're cropping ourselves down yep. and, and doing that. Um, so talk a little bit obviously this requires some gear right you need to have a bit of a oh, setup yeah. and a studio Definitely. so you've actually posted a great blog a uh, uh, post on your blog about your live streaming and live demo setup so if people are curious kind of how terry does this i think i should actually show this on my screen and All then right. we can yep. uh we can talk a little bit about it but you guys are going to want to go to terrywhite.com terrywhite.com and then just scroll down to his blog post not too long ago last month uh, april 2nd and it is called my live streaming studio setup it pretty much explains it all right there in the title. And um, this is a fantastic blog post. In fact, we have a few shots we can put up on screen and then I'll come back to this post. So Deborah, if you can throw up one, uh, some of the shots. So here we are, here's Terry at his command center in the captain's chair. Uh, and Terry, that's quite a setup there. That's a lot of machines. What are yeah, we looking at? Actually, it's, it's so on the left side, uh, you see Wirecast running. So mm -hmm. that's running on a 21 inch iMac. Mm -hmm. 
Um, then on the right side is the actual presentation computer. That's the 27 inch 2017 um, iMac. Mm -hmm. um, I'm actually doing some retouching on the center screen, which is a Wacom Cintiq. Mm -hmm. So that's part of the graphic design space. And then the two displays at the top are connected to just a low end uh, Windows desktop machine. I think it's an HP. And they basically serve as my comment monitor. So, mm, okay. uh, like Facebook is on one side and YouTube's on the other side, or or I can have multiple windows up for the different platforms that I might be streaming to. Got it. And do you? Uh, so let's actually go to the next shot, Deverly, and let's see if we can pull up. Um, I think you have everything labeled here, which is pretty cool. Yep. So, uh, so that's my next question. You have a keyboard and mouse for each computer, uh, for the most yeah, part. Yeah, I, I tried a like the uh, KVM. Uh, yeah, I tried. No, actually, um, what's the keyboard company? Logitech. Logitech makes a nice keyboard, which actually it's Bluetooth, mm -hmm. and it's got like a one, two, three at the top, so you can switch between three different ah, okay. devices or computers. But it's always like I'll, I'll hit one of the buttons and whatever that computer is having some kind of wireless interference. So <laughs> I gave up on that and just went, you know, old school. Just let me use the keyboards for each computer. That they came with. Yeah, yeah. Right. So you actually use the iPod Touch for your timer there in the corner. I see you've got a 17-inch uh, iMac, a Logitech. Um... Actually, that should be 21. Oh, yeah, okay, there's no 21. 17 anymore. Got it, got it. Yeah. Um, atomic clock keeping you on time. It's important. Get yeah. in, get out. Um, tell me about that lighting flex panel. How cool is that? That's one of those flexible lighting LED. Yeah, it's actually uh, Westcott's uh, LED flexible panel. So it's on a it's on a rigid frame now, but mm -hmm. that panel can actually wrap around things. It's just like a piece of cloth with uh, you know a million LEDs on it. Wow, pretty cool. And it never gets hot. And Right, never gets hot. So that's another thing is that this room can get pretty warm in and of itself with just with all the equipment. So the last thing I need to do is have all the hot lights on me. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. Uh, okay, let's. So what kind of um, there's the Wirecast setup on the Mac, and so it looks like just from a shot perspective, you've got the kind of the fourth layer is where most of your primary sources are, your cameras, your screens, um, and yep. so forth. Uh, so and, all of those next to the head, like the blue one, mm -hmm. all the ones to the right are just diff different angles of the really my little talking head. So mm -hmm. like the, the one immediately to the left or to the right of it is me on the lower left. Yeah. Then there's one with me on the lower left next to that with a what I call the hand the hand, cam. hand cam. So you can see me actually doing whatever it is I'm doing on the Cintiq with a pen. Mm -hmm. And then I've got one next to that that actually pivots because uh, this is a technique I use in, in ScreenFlow all the time, where it pivots the um, angles in the computer yeah. angles in right while I while I'm talking or explaining something, mm -hmm. uh, which makes my headshot just a little bit bigger because I'm explaining something and talking and not demoing. Mm -hmm. And then the one to the right of that is me on the right side. So so you use the angle just, in to kind of emphasize a ta a period of break, but not totally leave to the full screenshot where you want to you know get out of the interface because you're maybe emphasizing something, but you're not needing to. Demo yeah, usually that's because. I'm going to say something quick, mm -hmm. so I don't want to completely leave the interface, but that's what that's for. Got it. And then the one on the right of that is just a closing screen, so it's got like a video running in the background. Wow. Have you rigged any hotkeys for these quick so quick changeovers? Or oh, you actually, yeah. You so um, there's a, I use a Bluetooth uh, numeric keypad just to be able to switch between all of those different sources. I think I saw that. Deborah, let's go back one yeah. to the, um, the labeled shot where everything has a label. Um, and then we can actually see, I think you had right above, right there, the Bluetooth keypad yeah, for yep. switching. Cool. So that's literally sitting on top of the HP keyboard's <laughs> numeric pad because I'm not using that one. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I'm using that for, actually, a, that's my switcher. Punch it up. So I don't have to lean over. I don't have to, mm -hmm. you know, turn my head. I can just put my hand down there where my hand is anyway. Mm -hmm. And hit one, two, three, four, five to switch to the different scenes. Awesome. And you've, shots. you've got... Um, You've got one, uh, um, yeah, sorry, uh, just to clarify here, you, you have, you have uh, Wirecast set up in auto live mode. Correct. Okay. So that way, whatever you touch will just automatically transition to be the shot. Correct. Do you like to use cuts or do you like to use fades? I mean, is there a transition you prefer? I try, I, you know, I tried the different transitions and I just came back to cut. Cut. It's just because it's quicker. There's, you know, cut one, cut it's two. just smooth. It's just 
done. Got it. Got it. Um, so I think that's a really fantastic piece of advice is have a, a close, you know, have it in auto live mode so you can just punch a button, one, two, three, four, have your shots ready, and then you can do that. Now, when you want to bring on titles and graphics, is that when you start using a mouse to bring those on? Do you have, Or do you even have usually. those? Usually. No, uh, that starts to get a little complicated. Mm -hmm. So usually that's going to be uh, me just clicking on, on the various titles. Got it, got it. Uh, um, I've also experimented with um, switching like on an, an app on the iPad. Um, I noticed you guys have support for a new keyboard, so that's intriguing. Mm -hmm. So they're still you know, honing in switching from different sources since I'm the operator and the presenter at the same time. Yeah. If you have the luxury of having a second person to help you and be the operator, then that, that makes it so much easier because that person can bring on those live titles and 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 emphasize things that you know switch you if they see you talking yeah, I mean, they can switch to that yeah, shot. you see it happening right now Deborah yeah. Lee's the <laughs> right. wizard behind so, the scenes now the one yeah. thing we don't have we should probably we won't maybe do some sort of a hybrid where if I you know because I'll know kind of ahead of time maybe if I want to pull something up quickly so maybe having that Bluetooth option available just if if I need to punch something up real fast um, just yep. for pictures so we kind of pre-agree on that that might be a good hybrid option because otherwise my my one thing is to kind of be like hey can we Pull that up, yeah, please. <laughs> um, so, Terry, uh, talk about internet and connectivity. What kind of internet connection are you really pulling at that studio? I have uh, I have a great connection now. I, I didn't have one all along, but um, the first year I moved in my house, uh, we were on a very, very, very slow connection. Mm -hmm. So now I have Xfinity, which is 300, 300 megabit down and 30 or 25 up. Pretty darn good. So... Yeah, not complaining there. It's it's certainly been enough to do everything I needed to do. Awesome. So um, now let's talk about some of the other strengths and advantages that um, this setup allows you to do. Now, recently, you guys did a um, uh, you did your first sort of joint like three evangelist simultaneous demo, but you guys weren't even sitting in the same place. Can you talk a little bit right. about that? Yeah. So. Um, one oh, of my favorite features here. that you guys, yeah, one of my favorite features that you guys brought out in Wirecast 8 was a feature called Rendezvous. And, and Rendezvous basically allows you to bring in multiple people onto your stream. So um, I had done it a couple times just with people that were, you know, talking. They were like we're doing now. I'm not really presenting anything. We're just talking and having a chat, and that worked great. Then the next one I tried was the person was actually going to do a demo, and that worked great. She shared her screen. And uh, that worked out fantastically. So then I said, well, hey, when we were on the road a lot, the three of us would be on stage. You know, even even though only one pers person's presenting at a time, we'd all stay on stage for pretty much the whole day. And we would just um, take turns presenting and tossing files back and forth over the network and so forth and so on. So we always talked about hey, with Creative Cloud, you know, you can share a file in a library and the other person in another state or whatever can can uh, start working with that file. Well, this time we actually did it because <laughs> the three of us were on stage virtually. I was in Atlanta in my home office. Um, Jason was in Arizona in his own home office. And Paul was here in San Francisco uh, working from the um, Adobe offices. And we were streaming together, each presenting a full, you know, kind of workflow from um, the Adobe Creative Cloud perspective. So uh, I started off with the photography and a little bit of compositing. Um, Jason took over and did some video and, and audio, and then Paul did some more graphic design and, and um, UI UX design. So <clears throat> the stuff that I had worked on from the photography standpoint synced up with a Creative Cloud library, and then Paul and Jason were able to pick those assets up and keep using them. Got it. And it all worked. Great. I think we have a clip here. Actually, I'll play. It. I'm playing it on the on my desktop right now. If you guys look at, go to YouTube and search for the Wizards of Workflow, which is a great title, uh, design, photography, and video. You can see here. Here's the YouTube uh, uh, video that they posted. And Terry, this looks amazing. So um, it looks like you've got. Um, hold on. All of them coming in on their different rendezvous 
shots. You've yep. got their titles and how they people can reach out to them. Uh, and I'm assuming Jason Levine here is who they the guy they call um, uh, Adobe Jesus, right? <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's true. <laughs> and then uh, Paul. So you guys could what? So in addition to being able to all call in and talk in this kind of panel discussion format using Rendezvous, you were then able to hand off actual workflow like you know screens now yes you um so you started off and then handed right, it so over now you're on jason now i'm yep. on jason now the only thing is you guys were asking if you could bring yourselves in kind of just like you did locally and superimpose yourself so we could see that it would be jason on screen now through rendezvous right now screen share is just the only built-in option through chrome or through the browser you're using but uh we talked about maybe some ways you guys could actually bring in your video on top uh yeah the and i i'm i told the guys about that we're we can't wait to try it next week mm -hmm. so we're gonna do some testing with that and if that works our next one will be even better that's amazing so you guys are seeing this happen as they're figuring it out but um this is so cool that you guys were doing that and sharing it from one end of the workflow chain to the other and all being able to yep. get on the same call are you guys all uh so you're in atlanta is that correct Correct. And then uh, where are the other guys located? Uh, Jason's in Arizona and Paul's in, um, I keep wanting to say Utah, he's in Colorado. All right. So the addition, the, the trick here is just making sure everyone's coordinated, showing up at the same time and uh, in the right. right time zone, stuff like that. <laughs> yeah. uh, we always, you know, as, since uh, the company's based in California, we just always now use specific time whenever we're planning anything. Mm -hmm. Then everyone kind of knows to do their own conversion. Got it. Yeah, you, you add add three, minus, you know, add two, right. add one. Yeah, whatever, it is, whatever <laughs> works for you, where you are. That <laughs> makes a lot of sense. Because Arizona does I think, recognize daylight savings time, so that's always a challenge. Yes, so, hey, 1 yes. p.m. Pacific time, you figure it out. <laughs> um, you're responsible for your own atomic clock. Right. Yeah, so, uh, let, so Rendezvous, um, I think... I, I can't wait to see the next one. I think that's a really fantastic uh, workflow example. Um, how do you guys sort of coordinate uh, the assets and the passing of files from one? I mean, talk a little bit about, the, the, I think now we can get a little bit into the content creation side and the planning of a good live demo. What do you guys do to plan a, a great live demo ahead of time? How much planning does that take? Well, so a couple things. Um, number one, I've learned that for people to get to just build get your audience and and you know to have people there that want to watch it in the first place, you got not only have to have a good topic, you have to explain it or have a good title for your topic, in a way that, um, that will intrigue them or bring them in. So for example, let's say I wanted to show how to remove a person from a background and put them on a different background. Well, that feature in Photoshop is called maybe content aware fill or, or um, select subject or refine edge or, you know, all of the various technical things that that's called. If I said how to use select and mask, no one knows what that is. No one, you know, so you're not going to get people to come and see, say that. Right. If I said how to uh, remove your X from the photo <laughs> or how to bring in uh you know replace the background with a with a better background or whatever you know, taking red something. eye out yeah right taking you know those are terms that people understand so you always start with whatever the topic is going to be but then changing the wording to where it's going to have the most appeal to people that may not know what the feature is called so mm -hmm. therefore they're not going to be interested next it then becomes an issue of building the assets that will work so since my case is mostly photography, finding the right pictures that will show off whatever it is I'm trying to show. And uh, if I'm doing graphic design, finding a good layout or a good layout example that I'm going to recreate. I'm designing a logo or how to draw something, which I, I don't draw. But if I were doing that, then, of course, it would take a lot of practice to make sure it's going to work right when mm -hmm. I do it. Uh, so those are all the, the kind of tips I would say. Um, don't go in cold, don't go in, you know, Hey, I've done this a million times. Let me do it again live because that's usually when something will go wrong. Right. Um, practice, make sure all your files are where you need them to be so you can get them, get to them quickly. Um, because when you're recording the tutorial, you can always edit that stuff out while you're looking for something. But when you're live, 
you're literally making people wait while you figure it out. Right, right. So just preparing and having good visual examples and, of course, a good intriguing topic that will bring people in. How do you, uh, so if, you know, with time always being a little bit of a premium and I'm sure there's a million other things you always have to be kind of thinking about and doing uh, the rest of the time, how do you, uh, do, do you set aside time to practice um, certain demos before uh, you go live multiple times? Is, do you have a minimum, like I always go through a demo at least twice? Uh, obviously, the first time you do a demo kind of in entirety, and it must be difficult, especially when it's complex, like like the one you did with both Jason and Paul, um, to not only practice it, practice it well, and then keep your time, watching your time and making sure that just the most relevant chunks get shown and, and you're, yeah. you're you're clicking through things and getting getting quickly, uh, getting getting through it quickly. So how yeah. do you how do you kind of balance that? The prep well, versus all of the above. Screen? So we, we start with how much time we're going to give ourselves or give each person. So typically my Facebook lives are, we try to make them no more than 20 minutes. Uh, they tend to sometimes go to 30 minutes, but that's just an ongoing battle to try and, you know, pull it back, bring the time back down, pull it back. So first set a limit, set how long you want this to take. If it's 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, whatever the demo is, um, and then practice it to where it fits in that time. Mm -hmm. um, and think about it too, is are you showing something that, uh, that is worth the time to show. In other words, right. if I'm going to do part of the demo is going to take a minute to do it, was that minute worth it? Right. Versus having the pre-cooked version of it um, so that it's ready to just pull that file up and show it. Does it, do, do people really need to see the sausage being made or the hamburgers being made? Whatever <laughs> all the tiny little make. adjustments. Right, all the, the tiny little the, adjustments. The render bars. Right. Right, yeah, render bars, so... Uh, like, you know, that's a great example. I, I remember when I did a video on how to um, use Premiere Pro. Uh, well, I wanted that video to be shorter than it was, but what I realized is to spend the first half of the video showing them how it's done and then opening a project that was almost done and finishing it versus mm -hmm. the time it would take to get to the one that's done. Right. If you were doing it all from scratch. Yeah. I found that too. Uh, what I almost do is I'll, uh, I'll, I mean, when I'm, when I have time and when I get, when I get the kind of dedicated space to do it, I, what I'll do is I'll go through the whole thing, build the project, and then I'll just save snapshots along the way. And then yeah. out of my snapshots of the project, I'll kind of jump back and pick two or three, uh, you know, if it's a complicated project and kind of jump ahead. First I'll show the finished. So here's where we're going. Then I'll come back and go, here's where we started from scratch and I added two things. Now let's jump ahead. I, I, kind of if you you know wash rinse repeat wash rinse repeat you'll get here and then that's kind of yeah, your mid-stage exactly. project and then finally jump to maybe the 90 percent complete and then just and that's that's what i mean so do you know when it's rinse and repeat do people really need to see you do the same thing five times in a row mm -hmm. no they need to see you do it once maybe twice and then jump to the one that you did, had to do 10 of them it's already done mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so um talk uh so with this um Wizards of Workflow and Design, which is still running on my screen here. Uh, talk a little bit about uh, compelling projects that you guys are picking from running from one end of your expertise to the other and out the other well, end. Well, yeah, the reason that one was actually easier than usual to, to make and work is because we had all been in South Africa together at that game, game preserve. Mm -hmm. So the content that we were showing in this was actually from – you know, six, seven years ago that when we were there, mm -hmm. we still had all our files, of course. I still have all my photos. Jason still had all his videos. Paul still had some of the graphic design. Some of it he did from scratch. Uh, so a lot of it was because we had all been on this trip together, it was an easy one to, to start with and test because we all had assets. And that way the, the theme would be consistent across all three of us because we're all working on the uh, files from the same location. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's cool. Um, and so I, I can't I imagine you have some more ambitious plans for the ones coming up where you're doing handoffs and things like that, um, it, you know, more real time. Uh, but uh, so are you guys going to try to stick to a cadence for these and start doing one every you know month or so? Well, yeah, well, I was thinking we were thinking once a month. OK, cool. Well, um, and will you be broadcasting that on the Adobe Creative Cloud channel primarily or will you also be sharing it primarily. on individual channels? OK, um, primarily on the Creative Cloud YouTube and probably will experiment with the Creative Cloud Facebook as well. Okay. 
and maybe even simulcast it since that's an, another reason why I use Wirecast. <laughs> Simulcasting is pretty <laughs> great. Uh, so lots more where that's coming from. Now, if you guys have some questions for Terry or about anything that we talked about um, sort of sparked something for you, please uh, shout them out and let us know. Um, and I definitely am curious on um, if, you know, if you guys, if you have any preference as far as how Wirecast um, is helping you to enable live software demos, if there's sort of auto sensing or if there's any other features that you are finding that would be great for demo artists, um, please enter those into the chat. Or Terry, if you have some some additional thoughts, like I thought your your rendezvous screen sharing and compositing idea was a fantastic one, and um, so other things I'll pass on to the product team. Yeah, definitely. So um, with that, I think we should probably mention, we did talk about it at the beginning. Uh, we actually have a little bit of a thank you offer for our audience. So why don't we uh, kind of, we jumped into our conversation and, and kind of got rolling. So I didn't want to break it up. But if you want to, if you're interested, we actually, uh, in honor of Terry coming on the show, we thought we'd give anyone who's watching uh, for the next week a 10% off coupon. Uh, from our live deals page, a 10% off Wirecast if you are buying it. Uh, this should not work for upgrades. It should just be for a new purchase of Wirecast or somebody who's interested in getting the software to help them with their demos or do stuff on their Mac or Windows computer. Um, and so we can, you, where do they head to get that, Terry? Do you remember? I remember. I think it was <laughs> telestream.net slash Terry White. Telestream.net slash Terry White. So that'll be good for another week. There's a coupon there. And uh, Deborah Lee's telling me she may not be able to uh, put that on. But I'll put a link in the uh, chat. And you, maybe you can put a link in the show notes um, when we give you the MP4 yep. or something like that. Um, Definitely. And, uh, so tell us, but either way, it should be pretty easy to remember. Telestream.net slash Terry White. And uh, so, Terry, anything else that you sort of think that makes a great live demo? We talked about sort of making having good. Oh, there it goes. <coughs> there it is. All right. I saw this animated title <laughs> when it was being created. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Did a really good, good job on that. So uh, it's good through next week, uh, May 16th. And um, so, Terry, anything else that people should be thinking of when prepping or wanting to create live software demos? Uh, we talked about sort of the technology. I think one of the things that's really apparent from your studio is you really split the responsibilities for the processing across multiple machines. Like it really seems like that's a very good way to compartmentalize any point of failure and not ask one computer to do too much, like run complex yeah, video it's, processing. It's, um, it, it's, it's hard enough for the computer to keep the stream going at a, you know, at a real time HD quality. So the last thing you want to do is pile on top of that computer, you know, uh, memory hungry or, heavy applications that you're going to be doing the demo on because at the end of the day if you're trying to do it all on one computer everything's going to suffer like mm -hmm. so the stream quality won't be as good the you know software will take longer to process and and you'll see more render bars or things like that so definitely dividing up at, at least two computers one for the presentation and one for everything else mm -hmm. Um, Wirecast and maybe the chat, but um, so like I said, so I had a, a older computer just sitting around, so it became the chat computer, mm -hmm. and Should that be able way to handle nothing that. is yeah, is, yeah, I could definitely handle handle text. <laughs> yeah, and uh, and obviously <clears throat> to get the chat, are you you're typically pulling up the the preview of the stream or the actual channel page, right? Correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so I'm pulling up the Facebook page that it's streaming on or the YouTube um, event where it's showing me the chat window. Mm -hmm. In my hub for everything, you can get to the links for all the... Oh, there's there, feedback. You're, you're back. Uh, you can get t links to the ch the various channels I'm streaming on. Plus, every Monday, I try and do a blog post about what I'm going to be doing live that week, whether it's in person or a live stream. And you do that um, at terrywhite.com. I do that at terrywhite.com. Awesome. Of course, my YouTube channel, which is terrywhite.tv, and um, the various Adobe um, you know, product pages on Facebook, and uh, youtube.com slash uh, Adobe Creative Cloud. Awesome. Terry, it's been a real pleasure having you on the show. Don't forget, you guys have one week or a little bit less than a week to go get 
10% off uh, at telestream.net slash Terry. Thanks in honor to our guest this week for um, doing that. And Terry, uh, any last uh, things you'd like to share before we sign off today? No, keep streaming. And that, folks, was the incomparable Terry White. You can check him out at his YouTube channels for his weekly live demos or go to terrywhite.com for all the latest Terry White information. Thanks again to Terry for being on the show. That wraps up another episode of Wirecast Live. If you want to get more of this awesome show, you can find us here live every Thursday at 2.30 p.m. Pacific or California time. And you can follow us or get notified on these social media channels. I'd also like to thank our technology partners for the show that help make this show possible. They are critically important to our studio workflow, and we use all of their equipment in the making of this episode every week. Finally, next week, we have Owen Video coming on the show to talk about how to grow your Facebook audience. Owen is a broadcaster and a social media personality and an all-around great guy who knows a lot about how to grow your Facebook audience. I'm looking forward to that conversation. We will be back here next week, same time, with Owen to talk about that. I look forward to it, and I hope to see you guys there. This has been another episode of Wirecast Live.